Hello folks, just another brief update regarding recent developments. First of all, a belated new year to all of our friends, members and supporters and much respect and encouragement for all of the good work being done by the various support groups, activists and campaigners around the country with a special acknowledgement of course of the inspiring Apollo House project, proof in action that we do have the power and the absolute right to do the right thing. Now, those of you who have seen our recent video entitled Surely Heads Must Roll, uh, you will know that we recently caught the DPP's office and certain other agents of the state red-handed in blatant criminal acts, and we have placed that evidence online for everyone to see. Basically, we have proven beyond doubt that various persons working within our so-called justice system will not hesitate to break the law, to defy court orders, to erase evidence, or perjure themselves under oath. And we have also exposed how they are actively conspiring against law-abiding citizens, and especially against anti-corruption campaigners, whistleblowers and outspoken reporters such as Gemma Doherty, for example. But the big problem we face is that no matter who we report this criminality to, no one in authority is doing anything about it. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. With the Minister for Justice, the Garda Commissioner, the Taoiseach and even President Higgins himself all refusing point blank to respond to our urgent notifications as to what is going on. But we have to admit, for brass-necked arrogance and the ability to cover up their own colleagues' misconduct, the DPP's office surely takes the biscuit. Even in a sworn affidavit, they continue to deny the facts and the evidence before them, and are doing their best to make sure that the nonsensical prosecution of myself and Colin Granahan will go ahead in Castle Bar later this month, regardless of whether or not the state prosecutor and his collaborators in the Gardaí and the court service are shown to have committed serious criminal offences that would get you or I 10 years or more in jail. Nor should we be too confident that the High Court is going to put a stop to this, because our recent appearances there have not given us much hope either, with the Judicial Review Court, uh, which has supposedly been set up to correct these types of issues, variously ignoring or sidestepping our repeated allegations and proofs that various District Court judges in particular are breaking the law and violating our fundamental human rights with impunity. This is why the hearing on Wednesday the next uh, in uh, court number 46, January the 11th, is so vitally important. Because the evidence of criminality by agents of the DPP's office is unassailable, as are the proofs that the judge in that particular case is acting in reckless disregard for his obligations under the law and the Constitution. It is clear that our combined efforts to expose corruption and misconduct in the system is having a real effect, as can be seen by Minister for Justice Francis Fitzgerald's recent hurried attempts to make online harassment a criminal offence. One wonders indeed who it will be left to, to differentiate between accurate reporting in the public interest and supposed online harassment. It would seem that we're going to have a lot of conflicts of interest if some more notorious Gardaí, judges or DPP staff are put in charge of those particular prosecutions. One wonders indeed how long before simply telling the truth will be banned, or when the exposure of any other embarrassing facts will be outlawed, such as exposing the lies, deceptions, cover-ups and manipulations of the truth by Minister Fitzgerald herself, for example, or by the system in general. But as we all well know by now, it's never been about the truth. And it's all about protecting the shadowy elite and maintaining the mask of public propriety while they go about their venal and shameful business. Likewise with the barrister who recently tried to pass off fraudulent documents in court. Somewhat bizarrely, our complaint about that incident has been forwarded by Garda headquarters to the Garda Ombudsman Commission who don't seem to have an answer to our questions as to why they are involved in this matter at all. Our guess that it is that it may have something to do with the fact that we are also looking to prosecute two GSOC staff for conspiracy to cover up the crimes that were committed by Gardaí in that case. And this brings us to a timely reminder of the crucial importance of the common informer process, which basically makes available to every man or woman in this state the facility to prosecute anyone anyone else in this state in their own name without going via the Gardaí or via the DPP's office, which is especially handy 
if you are trying to prosecute someone from the DPP's office, for example. So please avail of this facility while we still can, because there can be no doubt that efforts are afoot in high places to take this facility away from us, if at all possible. Now this coming week we will also be lodging an appeal to the Supreme Court regarding our ongoing prosecution of the four Dublin Gardaí for assault. And we will be asking how and why our various applications for additional criminal summonses are being sidestepped, ignored or unlawfully refused out of hand and why several judges in succession have suddenly disappeared hurriedly into their chambers without any explanations. After all, we are simply pointing out the fact that certain ju judges are, it seems, deliberately and knowingly circumventing the law in order to protect persons in the pay of the state from legitimate private prosecutions. And we can absolutely show this is, that this is true. As a matter of high public importance, the Supreme Court should deal with this. And if they don't, well, the only other legal option will be the European courts, who we have to hope will be willing and able to tackle the growing endemic rot that infests our so-called justice system. And as always, I say this with all due respect to those who are doing their best to do their jobs with integrity in difficult circumstances. But there can be no excuse or leeway for those in the pay of the state, and especially those in senior positions of trust, authority or power, to be actively conspiring to visit crimes on the very people, ourselves, who they are obliged under oath to defend and protect. Now just a little uh, acknowledgement and a warning guys that our communications are still being interfered with so please bear with us as we do our best to, to deal with that. Thanks again to everyone out there for all the encouragement and support coming in. Let's please, please, all of us, continue to support each other because one by one together we can, we absolutely can make a difference. Thank you for listening.